Welcome to Palolo Points. I am Brandon Strange. I am joined by ESPN Houston's Charlie Palolo of the Press Box on 97.5, 92.5, which you can hear on weekdays. Uh, before we get into our Texas conversation, Charlie, I just want to remind the viewers, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do. Uh, Charlie, Arian Foster was on the uh, Gem and Juice podcast this weekend. He was pretty definitive in his opinion of what the Texans should do to keep Deshaun uh, basically anything. Uh, let's play that clip right now. If I'm the organization, I bend to his will. There's no way you don't. Like, he's, he's, he's a generational quarterback. You've never had a quarterback like him. You're not going to have a quarterback like him in the next who knows how many decades. I heard recently, like, he was worth, like, three first rounds or something like that. Like, dog, you could have a first-round pick every year for the next 10 years, and you're not going to get a, a talented quarterback like that. Maybe, but you already have one. So why not just invest in this one? There's just no, yeah. It don't make no sense. Okay, so Charlie, there's two things that I want to dig into out of here. One is the concept that a generational talent or the involvement of a generational talent in the, in the building process. And two is the abstract concept of draft picks. Um, so first, I want to say, you know, from our feedback that we get on our channel, we get a lot of comments about how Deshaun should just shut up. He's just a player. Uh, he shouldn't have any say in the GM and coach. But as Arian rightly pointed out there, uh, generational talent typically do have a larger say than what a normal player would. Charlie, in your opinion, to what degree should Deshaun Watson's talent and his value to the organization dictate the amount of say he has in these uh, decisions? Yeah, uh, multifaceted to me. The biggest Texans organizational problem is the organization's lack of credibility right now with Deshaun first and foremost, but really with a large percentage of the fan base. So what would ordinarily be thought of as a reasonable position, you're a player, you're a great player, you are not management. You are not qualified to select our general manager. Coaching input, people you'll work with on an everyday basis, a little bit different there. But in the end, there is a line to be drawn between labor and management. You can cite Peyton Manning with the Colts. Tom Brady chafed for years over the Patriots not supplying him with enough weaponry and wide receiver or other things that he wasn't peachy keen about. It worked pretty well there. Well, the Texans now have no foundation of credibility. All those cute little AFC South Division championship banners aside, that, well, we can trust in Belichick, the big picture, he'll get it right. Organizationally, Bob Kraft, he's always sailing the ship in a steady and solid direction. Uh, Texans basically have none of that. Right now, they're the SS Titanic, as opposed to the good ship Lollipop. Um, as a franchise quarterback, rank has its privileges. It does come with some leverage, but that you should just bend at his will. Well, what if he gets a wild hair a year and a half now? Now I want this. Now I want this. Now you need to give me this guy. Now you need to give me that guy. I'm not going to be happy again. And I might consider the man to be traded then. Uh, there are lines that new, do need to be drawn. Uh, of course, with the Texans and Deshaun Watson, is this one line thick enough that there will be no line drawing, drawing between the two parties after this? But I think it's simplistic and also a player perspective. Just bend to the quarterback's will. Do whatever he's want. Deshaun Watson's already a tremendous player and has seemingly limitless potential. He's not Tom Brady. He's not Peyton Manning in terms of revenue, uh, in terms of resume of accomplishment or organizational clout that he should have, but the dynamics of the Texan situation have swung the pendulum some more in Deshaun's direction. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the value of draft picks. And it's such an abstract concept because we, we talk about this in, in a vacuum. Uh, a, a player is worth this many draft picks or this many first round draft picks or this many firsts in a couple of seconds or, or, or whatever we say there. Um, even Lance Zerline was on this morning on the bench talking about how if if he were to go through the names that were projected in these spots where – the Texans would be drafting if they made some of these moves and say, here's the likely picks that fans would be like, oh, no, we, we, I'd rather just keep Deshaun. Isn't that kind of the point, though? Is, isn't that kind of point of is the the value of draft picks is in their potential? And you also have, kind of have to entrust that the team that's doing the drafting is going to get those picks right? Yes, because drafting well – that is the core foundation and lifeblood of building a successful NFL franchise. From the Chiefs killing it with Patrick Mahomes, 
to 20 years ago, the Patriots getting Tom Brady in the sixth round just to start with quarterbacks. But you look at the depth of rosters and then you fill in with free agency. You can't build the team around free agency. You have to draft the cheap labor, cheap labor relatively speaking, uh, the youth that comes with it, the multitudes of picks. You're not going to hit on them all, but what is your batting average of hitting relative to other teams? Uh, one part of the definition for me of potential, of course, is everything that one or something has yet to accomplish. So it is speculative. All the potential in the world is worthless if it's not realized. So it's a game of stock speculation. But there is a point, the Herschel Walker trade, famously back in the early 90s for the Cowboys, or 89, I guess, with the Cowboys and Vikings, where the Vikings gave up, gave up pick after pick after pick after pick and a couple, three players involved all for Herschel Walker. Well, if the Cowboys had not made hay out of an appreciable number of those picks, the Herschel Walker trade would not be thought of as the great to train robbery of NFL history. Uh, so in theory, of course, everything has its price. And so if the Jets were to offer Sam Darnold, no Sam Darnold, but three other firsts and three other seconds, that should help the ability to construct a core of a winning team for any competent franchise. But in the NFL, unless you build an absolute juggernaut, most other areas of the team, if you're not at quarterback good, you're just spitting into the wind. So that's the conundrum for the Texans. You get all the draft picks, but even if you do pretty well with them, if you're mediocre at quarterback post to Sean Watson, it's just a big exercise in wheel spinning. Charlie, one of the interesting things about the dynamics of this whole Deshaun drama that's going on right now is we really haven't heard much from Deshaun himself. And so a lot of the narrative that's going on in the media right now is kind of perpetuated by the media. It's things that we're, we're seeing sources report or cryptic tweets from Deshaun. How much do you think, you know, Deshaun could buy himself as far as cachet here by being a little bit more definitive or descriptive with the things that he wants? Or do you think that might not, that would hurt him and maybe put the team in a bad situation if he became more vocal? Yeah, I really don't know if it would help or hurt how much of this is generational or millennial that you live your life by a tweet. Uh, I'm not a fan of the coy little tweeting by Deshaun Watson at some point either hold your cards to your vest, and then you can air it all out when it plays out, or be a little more forthcoming now. Uh, that parts of Team Deshaun probably have fun. Knowledge is power, so they can feed a little morsel to this member of the national media, or feed a little morsel to that member of the national media and control the flow of conversation. Uh, but the fact that until the Texans hire a head coach and Deshaun declares, whether internally, organizationally, or to all of us, doesn't matter. I still want out. Or, well, that's that's the olive branch I've been waiting for. Let's mend fences, and if not, let bygones be bygones. Let's try to move forward productively. We're stuck in neutral in terms of where the story actually is, so we just get this he said, he said. Sources say this is possible. Well, isn't sources saying this is possible tantamount to saying sources are saying this is not possible also? Um, so I just think it's fish or cut bait. Do your, you know water and get off the pot? We need advancement in the story. It seems as though the Texans hiring a head coach comes before the playout with Deshaun Watson. Then I guess it's Deshaun's move that he formally tells the organization, get me out of here, or is there a degree of salvageability? 